welcome to another episode of Ask the Librarian video series where we answer your questions. October is Archives Month, and October 13th is Ask an Archivist Day. If you're watching this on the day it was posted, you get to hear it on our Ask an Archivist Day. For this video, we'll be answering questions about the archives, and then we'll be at the end hearing from a special guest. So before we get to the, your user questions, the first thing we want to cover is what is an archive? So according to the Society of American Archivists, archives can be used three different ways. Archive, singular, refers to a permanently valuable record. For example, letters, reports, paper drafts, or other items. And they are kept because they have continuing value to the creating agency or other potential user. Archives, the second definition, is an organization dedicated to preserving the documentary heritage of a particular group, city, state, business, college, or other organization. And finally, archives could also be used to refer to the building or part of a building where archival materials are kept. So when we talk about the Junietta College archives, we're talking about all the different materials that represent the history of the college. So when we ask for questions uh, through Instagram, through both the library's main account and the archives one, of one of the questions we were asked is shared here. Is there really a book in the archives made of human skin? And the first part of that answer is no. There are no books in the archives this way, but in our special collections, we do have one book that was believed to have been bound in human skin. So that book, uh, Bibliotheca Politica, a collection of essays on the divine right of kings, contains a book plate pictured here that according to the pre-Juniata owner, it was bound in human skin. But back in 2014, uh, we took some samples from the book's binding and had them undergo a process called peptide mass fingerprinting, which is an analytical technique for protein identification. And it was found that this particular book was bound in sheepskin. But if you want to explore the topic of anthropodermic bibliopathy, which is the name of finding books in human skin, we'll have resources shared on the Ask a Librarian page on our LibGuide. Our next question is how do we decide to add something to the college archive? And any institution that collects materials should have some sort of statement or listing talking about what materials they will collect. Again, for Junietta College here, when we think about things added to the archives, we want to make sure they help us tell the story of Juniata College. So one of the first questions we, we ask when an item is offered is, how does this relate or is it linked to the college? So popular items were offered are yearbooks. And at this point, if it's just the yearbook itself, we don't necessarily need that. However, if the past owner had annotated it, talking about what they remember from that experience, or it contains signatures from their fellow classmates, that might be a good reason for us to keep it. And this just gives you uh, an idea of some of the things that are in our archives. So we see t-shirts from some events, we see a yearbook, and that's the Juniata 1979, a collection of historic photographs, the college newspaper, and some older student handbooks. Those are all things representative of the college. And our final question, is there a collection you wish the archives had? Yes, I wish there were a collection devoted to the everyday life of students from early in the college's history. Using the yearbooks, student handbooks, and college newspapers, like what's uh, projected here, we can reconstruct some of it. We also have information or sources about courses and curriculum requirements, but not as much about class reading lists or assignments and tests. What did students regularly eat in the dining halls? What sorts of recipes did the home economics course use? What did a student notes look like in different eras? How has study abroad changed? Many of these, we don't really have a whole lot to work with, but oral histories would be a very advantageous way to get to some of this information. And hopefully that's a program we can start to develop in the near future. Before we end our video, uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce Julie Rockwell, archivist for the East Broadtop Railroad Foundation to talk about the East Broadtop's collection. So welcome, Julie. Hi, Jacob. Happy American Archives Month. Thank you for inviting me to hashtag Ask an Archivist Day. My name is Julie Rockwell, and I'm what archivists call a lone arranger. I am the sole archivist leading a new archives and special collections program for the East Broadtop Railroad Foundation and their sister volunteer organization, the Friends of the East Broadtop, 
located in Rock Hill Furnace, Pennsylvania. And I am in charge to develop the program and build a formal archive from scratch. What makes our collections so special is that there are thousands of distinctive archival collections, primary source materials, and historic physical artifacts that represent the history, memory, and legacy of the East Broadtop Railroad National Historic Landmark, known as the EBT, the oldest surviving narrow gauge railroad in the United States and the last narrow gauge common carrier in the United States east of the Rockies. Most of the collections are held in three vaults in the EBT Orbisonia Station House, built in 1906. These vaults, with an average of 150 square feet and 12 to 14 feet high, hold records such as bound volumes, maps, blueprints, ephemera, financial ledgers, and hundreds of file folders and record boxes filled with correspondence and other organizational records. These materials represent the scope of the collections from 1856 to the present. That's a lot of archival material to arrange, appraise, and process for public access. I must also develop the program with all archives policy standards in place, such as a strategic plan, a mission statement, and a collections management policy. With this type of documentation in place, we can ensure our archives will run just as smoothly as the many established archives that operate across the world. Thank you for allowing me to share about the EBT's Archives and Special Collections Program. All aboard for hashtag Ask an Archivist Day. Thank you for watching this video. If you have a question based on something from our content covered today or the library in general, feel free to submit a question in the links below this video as it appears on the YouTube page. And each time we make an episode, we'll look through the submissions and select a few to answer. Until next time.